and welcome back to another fun and exciting tutorial brought to you by Expert Guides YouTube channel. Before we begin, let me introduce myself first. My name is Joan Chaira S. Malikana. I am currently taking my graduate studies at the University of the Philippines de Liman, taking up Master of Arts in Education with specialization in chemistry education. I took my bachelor's degree at the Philippine Normal University, Manila, with a degree on Bachelor of Science in Chemistry for teachers. Now, I am a chemistry and a research teacher at a public science high school since 2016. And with that, as a research advisor, I am proud that we have won different division, regional, and national research competitions. All right, so after our discussion about molecules and ions, you are now ready for an electron configuration. So what is electron configuration? It is a distribution of electrons of an atom or molecule in atomic or molecular orbitals. So in short, electron configurations helps us to see how electrons are arranged in atomic orbitals for a specific element. But what exactly are orbitals? So as previously discussed, orbitals are the location wherein the electrons can be located or placed outside the nucleus. So inside an atom, there are four sublevels or subshells. Mainly, we have sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental, which symbolizes S, P, D, and F respectively. This is what we commonly know, the SPDF. Now, for an S orbital or for an, for an S subshell, one orbital can be found, okay? So for every orbital, there needs to be, there is a maximum of two electrons only, okay? So it means that uh, an orbital can only hold up to two electrons. So basically, this is what Pauli's exclusion principle tells us. Okay, so for one orbital, there is only a maximum of two electrons that it can hold. So the notation for our S sublevel or subshell is S1 or S2, depending on the number of electrons. Now proceeding to the P orbital. So P orbital has a P sublevel or subshell has a total of three orbitals. So since again, an orbital has a maximum of two electrons, so three times two, a total of six electrons for the P subshell. So the dotation would be P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, and P6. Moving on to the D sublevel. So a D sublevel has five orbitals. So again, maximum of two electrons for every orbital. We have five times two will provide us 10 electrons for the D subshell. And the notation for that would be D1 up to D10. Lastly, for our F sublevel or subshell, there is a maximum of seven orbitals. And these seven orbitals can hold a total, a total of 14 electrons following the Pauli's exclusion principle. That means, again, a maximum of two electrons for each orbital. So therefore, the notation for our F subshell R, F1 to F14. So comparing it with the periodic table, so the periodic table has four types of subshell, again, that we can refer to as block. So here, as the chart shows us, the S block is in these two groups, okay? And on the opposite side is our P block. Uh, by the way, the S block also has the helium in it, part of the S block. So on the opposite side of our S block is the P block, okay? And for the inner transition metals, here in between S and P, we have the D block, okay? And finally, at the bottom of the chart, we have our F block. All right, so now let's proceed to the electron configuration. So as you can see, there is a very long list that we need to follow, and this is the correct order for the configuration. So we have 1s, 2s, 
2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P, 5S, 4D, 5P, 6S, 4F, 5D, 6P, 7S, 5F, 6D, 7P, and the list goes on. All right? So it's very hard for us to memorize this very long order uh, with a combination of the, a number with numbers and letters, right? That is why, okay, following the Aufbau principle, we need to uh, follow this one that the Aufbau principle dictates the manner in which electrons are filled in the or atomic orbitals of an atom in its ground state. So it means that um, the electrons are filled okay, in the increasing order of orbital energy level. So this is how it goes. So we have here uh, the different sublevels with the different energy levels, okay? So as you can see in the sublevels, we started with 1s up to 7s, but the list goes on after that. And we have to write them di uh, uh, vertically, okay? So we need to write them vertically, 1s up to 7s, for example. So now let's proceed to the next energy. So as you can see, the numbers here are the energy levels. So according to Afba, we need to write the electron configuration in increasing order of orbital energy level okay so as for our second energy level or um we can see here that there is the p orbital uh the sub level we can see the p sub level now so you can write it uh 2p up to 7p vertically okay so for the three sub level natin uh we can write S, P, and D as well. So we added the D block here or the D sublevel here. So for our four main energy level, so it completes our uh, subshells or sublevels, S, P, D, and F. Okay. So in here, we just have to write uh, everything uh, vertically. Okay. With the according to the block or according to the sublevel. Because in that way, Okay, we can write diagonal arrows. And this diagonal arrows will help us in order, and this will this is the thing that we will follow in order for us to write the electron configuration of an element. So say for example, the diagonal arrow will start with 1s. Okay. Next it will proceed to 2s. Next is 2p. Okay, so this one uh, will guide us for the electron configuration. So 2P going to 3S. Now, another diagonal arrow will start with 3P going to 4S. Next, it will start with 3D going to 4P up to the 5S. And it will go on and on. Just follow the diagonal order. And this is a good presentation or a good way for us to determine the electron configuration of an element through the diagonal rule. Okay? So we don't need to memorize this order, this very, very long order of the electron configuration, but we just have to write them accordingly with the diagonal rule. And it will help us in determining the configuration of an element. Moving on, let's have an example. So we have here fluorine. So knowing that uh, the atomic number of fluorine is 9, and since atomic number, again, is equal to the number of protons and the number of electrons, okay, the, electron, the electrons of fluorine here is, has a total of 9. So I just want you to remember this one. Again, the maximum number of electrons for each of the sublevel for S, again, the maximum is 2. For P, the maximum is 6. For D, we'll have 10. And F, will have 14. So let's proceed. Okay, so I will be writing here the electron configuration written in the diagonal rule for us to be guided. And let's start. So 1S, the diagonal arrow here. Okay, we will start with 1S. So again, an S can hold at most two electrons. So we have to fill it with two electrons here. So one S2. Next, let's take a look at the diagonal arrow. 
or the diagonal rule. Next is 2S. So let's write 2S here. And again, S can hold a total of two electrons. So we have to fill it, two electrons. Next, let's have, all right. So we will start now with 2P, okay? So uh, from 2P, Okay, so again, the maximum number of the electrons for the P sublevel is 6, but we have to stop here with 5. Why? Let's try to add all of the electrons here. Let's try to add uh, the superscript here, which are the number of electrons. And uh, it will give us a sum of 9. So indicating that these electrons, okay, provides us the electron configuration already of fluorine, okay? So this one is just very easy. Next, uh, as we can see here, uh, using the electron configuration, we can represent it also with an orbital diagram. So each box actually represents an orbital, okay? So an orbital contains, again, at most two electrons, okay? So let's try to write it here. Again, the electron configuration of fluorine, okay? Again, is 1 is 2, 2 is 2, and 2p5. So for our S orbital, uh, for S level, okay, or a 1s, we have one orbital only here. Next, let's write here now the 2s. So the 2s, we only need one orbital for 2s. And lastly, for 2p, knowing that 2p has three orbitals, so again, one orbital is equal to one box. Okay, that is why 2p has three boxes here. Okay, so uh, we have to fill in now each orbital with electrons. Okay, so again, here, this is, this denotes the number of electrons of each orbital. So S, our 1s here has... Uh, again, uh, j just be guided of the number of electrons. Okay. So let's try. We need to fill up 1s first. Okay. So as you can see, this is an upward spin of an electron. So 1s next upward, next is downward. Okay. So this is um, the rule that we need to follow in writing the orbital diagram of the electron configuration. So since we only need two electrons for orbit, this orbital, this one is already complete. Moving on to the next orbital, which is 2s. So again, s only needs two electrons. That is why we just have to copy the other orbital. Upward spin, uh, this uh, first spin or per arrow denotes one electron, okay? And then downward spin. So we need two complete, an upward and a downward spin inside an orbital, okay? But how will we do it in a P orbital, uh, in a P level? So basically, uh, we have here a total of five electrons, right? So we have to stop at five, okay? But how do we do this? We need to fill up all the parallel spins first, okay? So basically, of course, we will be starting with an upward spin. That is why for the 2P, the first orbital of that, it's upward. And we need to, again, provide all the parallels. So, dapat pare-parehas muna. We need to start with upward spins first before proceeding with the downward spins. So, this is our rule here, okay? So, upward spin for the first orbital, another upward spin for the first orbital until we fill in up to the third upward spin. So, since we are done with the three parallel upward spins, we can now proceed to the downward spin. Okay, so our downward spin, okay, will have, uh, will be filled in the first orbital of P. And we, how many electrons do we already have here? One, two, three, four. So we still need one electron. And there it goes, the complete orbital diagram of chlorine. So this is how, uh, this is one way to show the electron configuration that represents the orbital diagram of chlorine. Let's have another example. Uh, basically, uh, what we are following actually uh, with the spins, okay, is under Hans rule. 
So it says here that every orbital in a sublevel is singly occupied before any orbital is doubly occupied. So it means that we need to fill all the orbitals first, one orbital first before proceeding to the next orbital. Okay, so we need to complete the first orbital first. And another rule is that all of the electrons in sing singly occupied orbitals have the same spin to maximize the total spin. That is why we follow that we need to have a parallel spin first. So we need to have upward spins first, okay? One, two, and three. And then proceeding to the downward spin for the next arrows or for the next electrons. Okay, so let's have another example. We have phosphorus right here. And uh, this is another, again, a guide for you to, but, but, uh, but you just have to remember this part, okay? So again, S, uh, Sub-level has a maximum of two electrons for every orbital. Uh, P has a maximum of six. D has a maximum of 10. And F has a maximum of 14 electrons. So phosphorus, as we can see here, its atomic number is 15. That is why it has a total of 15 electrons. So let's start to write its electron configuration. So I always have here the diagram rule, uh, the diagram or the, the diagonal diagram. So we just have to follow the arrow. Now, okay, let's start with 1s. It will provide us 1s2. Next, 2s will have 2s2, okay? 2p to 3s. Okay, let's just follow this one. But we need to stop with 2p. Why? Because we need to, okay, but we need to stop with 2p and then proceeding to 3s. Okay, so, okay, though, so here is the 3s now. And next is, um, okay, and next is 3p going to 4s. But in here, we need to stop with 3p. Why? Because we need to be, um, guided with the number of electrons of the element. So knowing that phosphorus has 15 electrons and adding all the superscript here, again, denoting electrons, 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 3 will give us a total of 15 already. That is why we will not be proceeding with the next level or with the next orbital, okay? So we this is the complete electron configuration of phosphorus. But... How can we represent this ground state electron configuration using a noble gas notation? Okay, so knowing that phosphorus, uh, again, has 15 electrons. And at uh, this part, uh, the noble gas, the following noble gases here in group 8A, okay? So we have helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. So basically, in this part, we have to pick a noble gas that has an atomic number that is less than 15, okay, but very close to 15. So looking at the table here, so helium has two electrons, so that is why uh, it cannot represent the rule. All right, so continuing with the neon here, okay. Okay, so basically neon is the um very close to 15 the our phosphorus the number of electrons 15 because neon has a total of 10 electrons so going back with the electron configuration of phosphorus here's what we're going to do we have to denote it with the ground state ground state okay so uh, since neon has 10 electrons the electron configuration until 2p6 is equivalent to 10 electrons. That is why we can get this one and convert it into a bracket inside with neon. Okay? And then we just have to copy the remaining. So the remaining are 3s2 and 3p3. And connecting it with neon, bracket neon, 3s2, 3p3. So this is another way to write the electron configuration, but using a noble gas notation. Okay, so now let's proceed to the orbital diagram. 
So the orbital diagram of Asperus, we just have to follow the rule before previously. Okay, so for phosphorus, again, its electron configuration is here. And for every orbital, again, is uh, one box. So we have one S, one, one box for that. Two S, another one box for that. Two P, it has three orbitals. That, that is why we have three boxes here. Three S, one box. And three P has three boxes. So let's just fill in all the electrons using our arrows or the spin. Okay, so upward spin and then downward spin. Next, upward spin, downward spin. Next, for 2P, we have to fill in all of the upward spins first and then all of the downward spin. Okay, next, let's proceed to 3S with upward spin and downward spin. And the last one for 3P, as you can see, we only need to fill in three electrons. That is why all of the electrons here or the spins are upward, providing us with the parallel spin. So this is a way for us to write the electron configuration of phosphorus using the orbital diagram. Okay? So now let's proceed to the quantum numbers. So quantum numbers is actually usually determined for the last electron of an atom. Given its electron, electronic configuration, that is why our electronic configuration is very important. You need to understand all of its rules, okay, before we can proceed to this concept. So there are four types of quantum numbers. Having principal quantum number that, were, uh, that denotes N, small letter N. Azimuthal or angular momentum quantum number that give us um, small l, okay? And then we have the magnetic quantum number and the spin quantum number. Now let's discuss each of them. Now the principal quantum number actually is associated with the energy level within an atom. For the angular momentum quantum number or the azimuthal is associated with the sub-level, okay? And then we have the magnetic. That is, this is associated with the specific orbital within the sublevel. So we will uh, go go for that later on. And for the last one, there uh, the MS will uh, the electron spin, which is up or down. So let's have each of the examples of the quantum numbers. So again, principal quantum number. Uh, provides us the size of the orbital or basically the main energy level. So going back with the with Bohr's atomic model, okay, so at the center is the nucleus and um, we uh, the nucleus is has the shell okay surrounding it. So for each of the shell, it is each of the energy level. So say, for example, the first uh, energy level, n is equal to 1. The second is n is equal to 2. And the third is n is equal to 3. Okay? So basically, this is what the principal quantum number shows us. Now, proceeding with the angular momentum quantum number. So the shape of the orbital provides us the uh, azimuthal or the angular quantum number and as well as its sublevel. So again, when we say sub-level, sub we have the S, P, D, and F. So the values of the angular momentum quantum number is actually 0 to N minus 1. So we need to get first the principal quantum number, which is the N, and subtracting it with 1. And from that, say, for example, the principal quantum number is 4 minus 1. So N is equal to 3 up to 0. Okay, So 0 is still considered for this. So it has the same value with the subshell. So it is dependent, again, on the subshell or the, on the sublevel. So if we have an S-type, okay, L or the angular quantum number is equal to 0. If we have a P-type, L is equal to 1. For D-type, is 2. And for F-type, is 3. Okay? So these are the different shapes of the S, P, D, and F orbital. So as S is just a sphere. All right, for P, it looks like a dumbbell. Whereas for D, it looks like a clover. And F is very complicated drawing. 
Okay, so let's have an example. So again, if our principal quantum number is equal to one, so n minus one, it will give us a angular momentum quantum number of zero. So if the principal quantum number is two, it will give us zero and one. Whereas for three, again, we have the orbitals 3s, 3p, and 3d. So meaning L, if we have an S, of course, the angular momentum is zero. If we have a P, the angular momentum is one. And if we have a D, the angular momentum is two. So for N is equal to four. Okay, so we have a total of four sublevels or four orbitals. We have 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. So if the angular momentum of the s orbital again is zero, angular momentum of p is one, and angular momentum of d is two as well as f would be three. So it just only means that the number of sublevels, okay, is actually equivalent to the energy level. So if we have an energy level of say we have twenty, how many sublevels does it have? Of course, it also has. 20. Okay, so this is our conclusion for this part. Okay, so now let's proceed to magnetic quantum number or ML. So magnetic quantum number gives us the orientation of the orbitals in space and it provides us any integer between negative 1 and positive 1, including 0. So same uh, ML is equal to the orbital. So say, for example, we have angular momentum quantum number or the L is equal to zero. That is why our ML is equal to zero as well. So for uh, principal quantum number of two, okay, so our L is equal to one. So that is why our ML is, uh, is in between negative one, zero, or positive one. So how about if we have an angular momentum of 2. So our ML could be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And if we have an angular momentum of 3, ranging from negative 3 up to positive, this one would should be positive, positive 3, okay? So proceeding to the electron spin quantum number or MS, so going back with uh, the rule that the maximum uh, number of electrons per orbital is two, okay? And it can be either positive one half or negative one half. How is this? So uh, it also shows us that uh, according to Pauli's exclusion, there uh, is no two electrons in an atom that must have the same set of quantum numbers. So they are very, uh, each of the electrons of an atom must be unique. So let's say, for example, we have here, the principal quantum number is 2, okay? And uh, the angular momentum, of course, n minus 1 is 1. So we have 1. And our ML uh, is actually positive 1, say, for example. So in this orbital, in this positive 1 of an ML, it can only show us that it can be with ms positive one half and m another ms which is negative one half this so this uh provides us the spin of the electron is it up or down i'll show you more later so let's have an example so basically an l or the angular momentum say for example it's zero and knowing that an angular momentum of zero will give us s sub level right so an s sub level will provide us only one orbital so that is why its magnetic quantum number or its ML is equal to zero. Okay, next. If our, our, our angular momentum uh, is equal to one, it will give us what? What sublevel? It is P sublevel, good. So knowing that P sublevel has a total of three orbitals, right? So we have three boxes here, one, two, and three. And then uh, our ML or our magnetic quantum number, 
So if you have three boxes here, we can write it negative one. We have negative one, zero, and positive one. So this is uh, that, that it, this is why uh, p orbital has negative one to positive one ml because of the three boxes here because of the three orbitals here. So proceeding with uh, d, let's proceed to d sub level. So d sub level again has an angular momentum of two. Okay. So of course this is a d sub level, and then it will give us five boxes, right? So it means five orbitals. And then uh, it only means that our magnetic quantum number or our ML is start, it will start with negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, and this one is supposed to be positive two. This one is a positive two, okay? All right, so what if our angular momentum or our L is equal to three? So it only gives us a sub level of F. Good job. So that is why, again, an an F sub level has seven orbitals. That is why we have seven boxes right here. Fives. Okay. And each box, of course, uh, it can represent now that our magnetic quantum number or our ML would be ranging from negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two, and positive three. Now, let's proceed to the MS or our electron spin. So, an orbital, again, only needs a maximum of two electrons, right? So, if a spin, okay, so here are the two electrons, upward spin and a downward spin. If a spin is actually upward, okay, our MS or our electron spin quantum number would be equivalent to positive one half, okay? And if our spin is actually downward, our MS is equivalent to negative one half. Okay, so I think you are now re ready to go for the four principal quantum numbers. So let's start with uh, this one. This is the rule. In determining the quantum numbers, again, we have to uh, look at its last electron from the electronic configuration. So lo look at the last orbital. So example. So we have the carbon atom in its ground state, okay, and has the configuration of 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. So the last orbital of the carbon atom is 2p4. So we will be focusing on 2p4 only. Okay, so we have 2p4 right here. And we have to start with the principal quantum number. Again, the principal quantum number is uh, denotes n, right? So n is just the numerical coefficient of the last orbital. So since our numerical coefficient here is 2, so our n here is equivalent to 2. Next, L. So our L or angular momentum is dependent on the orbital type, right? So since P, okay, P is the sublevel here, uh, we can see now or we can now give that L in carbon atom is equivalent to one, okay? And for the next part, ML and MS, we have to draw the sublevel for the P-type or the orbital diagram for the P-type. So again, P-type has three orbitals. That is why it has three boxes, okay? And these orbitals will be labeled with integers, wherein zero would be at the middle of the box. So that is why we have for the P-orbital, we will start with negative 1, 0, and positive 1 since it only has three orbitals. So that is our range over here. Next, let's take a look at its electron here or the superscript here. So place the four electrons outward spin first, starting at the leftmost box, which uh, provides us or which indicates the lowest energy. So again, P has three boxes, okay? So we have negative 1, 0, and positive 1 for our magnetic quantum number or for our ML. For our MS, we need to uh, write the spins now. We need to conduct the spins. So we will start with, of course, an upward spin from the leftmost left most box. And we need to write uh, all the upward spins first, diba? Right? So we, we start with upward, upward, upward spin. In, he, in this orbital. Next, another upward spin. Next is another upward spin. And 
since we need four electrons, we still need one more electron. So how will we do that? So after filling up all the boxes with upward spin, we have to place the excess electrons as the downward now, okay? Okay, so since we are done with the three upward spins in the different orbitals, okay, this is the time that the downward spin will be written, okay? So this is the final orbital diagram of the carbon atom. So now it's ML, okay, it's ML now. Where, where does the last electron stop? Okay, we need to look at the last electron. So since the last electron stopped here, the ML of the carbon would be negative 1. And how about its MS? It stopped with a downward spin. That is why its MS is equivalent to negative 1 half. So this is how we provide the quantum numbers, the four quantum numbers of an atom. Let's have another try. So example, what are the quantum numbers of sodium's outermost electron? So again, the atomic number of sodium is 11. So we need to know its outermost electron. So by just writing its electron configuration, okay, so again, we need to have a total of 11 electrons, right? Here, so the superscript 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 1 will give us 11 electrons. So we will stop with this one. And then it provides us the outer most uh, electronic configuration of the sodium is 3s1 okay now from the 3s1 it's very simple that the energy level or our principal quantum number is again the coefficient so the coefficient is 3 therefore our n is equal to 3 and knowing that the sub level or the sub shell is s Okay, its angular momentum, S is equal to zero. We have to memorize that, okay? So S is equal to zero, P is equal to one, D is equal to two, and F is equal to three. As simple as that. Okay, so since our given here is S, again, the angular momentum or our L is equal to zero. Next, we need to write the orbital diagram. So since the orbital diagram for a 3S1, uh, we'll, we'll just look at the S part. So S only needs one, uh, is only one orbital, right? So we have to draw the orbital here and it will give us uh, zero. So what is this zero? ML now is equal to zero, okay? So since this is only one box, it is equal to zero. And when we place one electron only, because this one is 3S1 only, so we need only to place one electron, right? So since uh, the first electron is always upward spin, okay? So upward spin of the electron, and we stop with this, our MS now, or our spin, would be positive one half, okay? So this is the final N, L, M, L, and MS of the given sodium, okay? So I want you to try, to try this one, okay? So I want you to determine the electronic configuration of vanadium that has an atomic number of 23 and the quantum numbers of the last entering electron so you will be giving us the two sets that we need again electronic configuration and the principal quantum numbers the four uh, the four quantum numbers rather okay so i want you to pause this one and try to answer okay so now that you're done let's have the answers Okay, so again, vanadium, 23. So we need to fill all the electron configuration that will give us the sum of the 23 electrons. So 1 is 2, again, 2 electrons only. Next, 2 is 2, 2 electrons. 2p6, another 6 electrons. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d3. And we will stop here with the 23 electrons. So the whole electronic configuration of vanadium is this order. Now, it's quantum number. Let's try. So as we can see, okay, the last entering electron or the outermost part of vanadium, okay, it's 3D3. Okay, take a look at this. It's 3D3. That is why we will be getting the 3D3, okay? And we can now get the principal, uh, the quantum numbers. So let's start with the principal quantum number. 
So, 3, of course, the coefficient is 3. Therefore, our n or principal quantum number is equal to 3. And since this one is in D, okay, D sublevel, so the D sublevel is always, uh, has always the angular momentum of 2. Okay, so always take a look at that. If uh, you did not memorize the angular momentum, if you know the principal quantum number, just use the formula 3 minus, uh, n minus 1. So in this part, we have 3 minus 1, it will give us L is equal to 2. Okay, next. The orbital diagram for a D again, how many orbitals does it have? Five orbitals. That's why we need five boxes. So writing the five boxes here uh, with the equivalent negative two up to positive two, we need to write the three electrons that were given here. Okay, 3D3. So again, three electrons only. So we need to write all the upward spins first, right? So upward spin. Upward spin, upward spin. That will give us a total of three electrons. And then we need to stop here. Okay? That is why our ML now is equal to zero. And our MS is positive one half because the last electron is in upward spin. Okay? So basically, that's the end of it. And I hope that you have learned uh, the electron configuration and the quantum numbers of an element. Next up, we will discuss valence electrons, the valency, and the chemical bonding. So I will see you again next time. Goodbye.